Hey, what's up everyone? So today's video is about how to make your own bulletin board using inexpensive products that you can get at your local craft store. And I had such a good time making this video for I you guys. I am so happy about the way that it came out. This is actually it right now. This is what it looks like, the finished product. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks again so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Okay, so to begin, I'm just taking my batting here and kind of eyeballing it out and cutting however much I feel comfortable working with. Everyone is going to have, you know, a different amount, however much they're comfortable working with, and we're just going to go ahead and trim that up later on. Okay, so this is what it looks like once it's cut accordingly, and here I'm just going to fold over the sides and round the corners, and then taking my staple gun, I'm just going to staple down and make sure that I don't hit the cork board. You just want to hit the um, wooden edge around the entire bulletin board. And I was taking about four inch sections, putting staples four inches apart and just repeating the process until the entire batting is stapled to my bulletin board. So now I'm just trimming the ends um, around the corners and the sides, just trimming however much I feel necessary. I kind of used the wooden edge as a guide and only cut that much. So that's what it looks like once it's all trimmed. And now I'm just taking my fabric. I used one yard, I'm sorry, half a yard of fabric and I'm just cutting it out, uh, eyeballing it as well around the sides and using however much I see necessary and then kind of pulling it over to make sure that it's the correct amount that I need. fabric is all trimmed, I'm just going to go ahead and take my staple gun and staple the fabric on top of the batting, making sure that I don't do double staples. You want to put staples in between the sections that you left unstapled for the first layer of the batting. You want to make sure that you're pulling the fabric as tightly as possible and when it comes to the corners that you're rounding them and pulling them tightly as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and repeat this process until all of the fabric is stapled down on top of the bulletin board on top of the batting and then I'm just going to go ahead and trim the edges as well. So now I'm just taking my black ribbon and I'm just going to measure out a diagonal line um, from the corner to the center all the way down to the other corner and just making sure that the ribbon uh, completely covers the other side all the way to the back so that you'll have room to staple it on the back side of the bulletin board. And I'm just going to repeat this process until I have X's covering my bulletin board. I go back and play with the setting and the placings of the ribbon a couple times so feel free to you know make it the way that you want to make it and adjust the design according to your taste and your style. So once you've decided exactly where you want the ribbons to be and the design that you are happy with, just take some pins and Put them in between wherever the two ribbons meet, creating an X, and this will allow you to be able to flip your bulletin board over and staple down the ribbons, but have them stay in place at the same time. So I'm doing exactly that right now. This is just showing you how I flip the bulletin board over and staple down individually each ribbon at a time until they were all in place. taking a piece of wood, I just placed it underneath each section of the bulletin board wherever the two ribbons met and um, you just want to put a small hole and the best way to do that is to take a nail and a hammer 
and just nail the nail down until it meets the wood and then use the back of the hammer to take the nail out. You want to replace the nail with a brad and just take one brad and put it through the hole you just made with the nail. And once you get it through, sometimes it takes a couple tries, it's a little tricky, but once you get it through all the way, you just want to flip the board over and push down both sides of the brad. You want to move the wood each time, uh, moving it in a different section. So now this is totally optional step, you don't have to do this, but um, I just wanted to add a little bling to my board. You can totally be fine with the brads, it's a very finished effect, but I just wanted a little something else. So I took a hot glue gun and some purplish reddish beads and glued them on top of the brads. And um, that's basically it. I let it sit for about 5 to 10 minutes and then my board was completely done.